This war had been going on for five years, and this war is atrocious. The regime of Bashar al-Assad is murdering its own people, and Aleppo is a martyr city. Can we let this happen? Can we close our eyes? The UN General Assembly was an opportunity to hold multiple talks, yet still we are unable to implement a ceasefire agreement struck between John Kerry and Sergei Lavrov. And so we have reached the limits of this method. So we need to be much firmer and much clearer. In particular with Russia and Iran, but Russia especially, because the bombing of Aleppo is only possible because Russia contributes to it. It is absolutely necessary that Russia face its responsibilities. If you don't, then you could be complicit of war crimes. What was attempted were talks in Geneva for a ceasefire, but they didn't succeed because there is a problem of trust. When the Friends of Syria group met in New York, I witnessed this verbal contest between the Russian and the American, and the others were spectators. I proposed in the name of France to establish a mechanism of control for a ceasefire that not just Russia and the US would be involved in, but also the other countries, European and Arab, that would control the implementation of a truce and humanitarian access to renew trust and create the conditions for a ceasefire. We must be clear, there will never be a military solution. But the Assad regime seems to be more concerned with attacking the rebels, the moderate rebels, so-called, than ISIS. It doesn't seem like they share your concern with extremist terrorist groups. We must convince Russia and Iran. They are stakeholders in this war because on the ground there are little more than 5,000 Russian soldiers, several thousand Iranians and Hezbollah. Let me give you an example. Everyone must face their responsibilities. The regime used chemical weapons. I proposed in France's name that the Security Council under Chapter to seven, which means with possible sanctions, condemn the use of chemical weapons. Is it acceptable to use chemical weapons? We will see what Russia does. If there is a vote at the UNSC, will Russia use its veto? Can it take this moral stance vis-a-vis -vis the international community? To close its eyes to the use of chemical weapons, this is a concrete example of what can be done. So you want to pass a resolution at the United Nations Security Council condemning the use of chemical weapons in order essentially to, quote, shame Russia and to having to vote in favor of it. Under Chapter 7... Is there another solution? We could bomb regime forces. We tried. France supported this in 2013 after the use of chemical weapons by Assad's regime. That was the red line. We had all agreed, France, Britain and the US, that if this red line is crossed, then we will strike regime forces. But that didn't happen. Why? Because of Barack Obama? It was a sovereign decision of the United States and Britain. It is now in the past. We are in another reality. Do we keep our eyes closed? Do we allow the massacre of Aleppo? I say we cannot accept this massacre of Aleppo. So diplomacy, not more military involvement, not uh, uh, no fly zones. Je, je, je... To have a no-fly zone, you need to take military action. Oui. The question was raised in 2013. France's position was always clear, and it still is, but we cannot act alone. If there are other countries willing to participate in the imposition of a no-fly zone over Syria, you would, you would, in essence, support that. I think we need to favor the negotiation track, the political process, but also be firm. You need to be more firm. It's true that these last few weeks there was a sincere attempt by my counterpart John Kerry to negotiate with Sergei Lavrov, but we saw that it led to a dead end. So we have to speak with the same voice, with a lot more firmness to say to Russia, face your responsibilities, because if you don't, you will be guilty of abetting crimes against humanity. It's not nothing to say that. Now, we... Oui, the crime de guerre, war crimes. What do you make of Donald Trump, his proposals in terms of foreign policy specifically, since you're the French foreign minister? I don't exactly know what Donald Trump's foreign policy is. It's very confused. Of course, as the French foreign minister, I'm not going to tell Americans how to vote. But let me tell you something. The future U.S. president is important for the U.S., but also for the rest of the world.
We spoke about Syria, for example. We are allies, close allies, and have been for a long time. I know Hillary Clinton a little, and when she was Secretary of State, she did a great job and lived up to her responsibilities. As for Mr. Trump, I have one observation. He said some very harsh things about France when France was suffering from terrorism and questioned the French people. Those are words that I will not forget. He also said that if the French had been armed, if arms were legally for sale, that the French could have protected themselves. You know what France is doing today is to fight against gun trafficking, so as not to allow terrorists to use weapons to attack French or European citizens.